Animation layers are a really good way to add really quick and easy texture to your animations. Like you see on the screen now, this walk cycle I made in about an hour, but the snapping action and the turning of the head took about two or three minutes. In this video, I'll show you how you can do that and make some really quick adjustments to any animation, not just your cycles. So in Maya, the first thing we need to do is choose the controllers we want to use for our animation layer. So for this action, of course, I'm using upper body. So I'm going to use the FK controllers and obviously the right arm. This is completely dependent on your shot. You could have multiple controllers and different layers. Um, but to keep it simple, I'm going to use one layer and one action for this tutorial. So the button here adds and makes a new layer and name it something which you can remember. So it's snap for me. And then select the objects. And because I'm doing a cycle, I want to key the first frame and also the last frame. This way the cycle will still loop. If you're just doing a normal animation, then what you want to do is key the bit before and a bit after the section you want to change. So this makes sure you actually keep the animation the same either side of your layer. And then just like you do any other sort of pose to pose workflow, we're going to make our pose for the first um, part of the action. So for me, this is the kind of anticipation pose, but the hand comes up, making like uh, the snapping motion with the fingers. I'm not sure about you guys, but I snap with my second finger. I think that's the most common way to do it. So the first finger kind of extends, or the, um, is it the index? Yeah, the index finger extends. Then even middle finger for the snapping action. So this is really the same as any other workflow. You just make your poses. And after you make your first pose, you can kind of see already the kind of what's happening. Because as you sort of move towards that pose, the character will kind of move into that action, but maintain all the momentum and all the extra information from the base layer. Um, but then just like pose to pose animation, just do our next pose. So we can go on to the, um, I guess the first key pose. So I'm going to make my actual real anticipation now. Beforehand, that was actually kind of my first golden pose. I misspoke before. But yeah, this is the anticipation. So the hand comes up even further. The wrist kind of recoils or pulls back. Is if you're winding up for like a punch. I can maybe bend the fingers. I, mean, I could spend more time on this to be honest. But um, for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it quick and easy. But yeah. And now you can make your second golden pose, the actual main finishing part. So this is really just three poses and basically done already. You can add some overshoots and you can add some offsets, which I'll do in a second. But this is really how easy it is to add extra information to animation and you lose nothing. All the animation we did before is still kept there, it's safe from the base layer. Um, and at this point, you want to start thinking about how to merge it back into our main animation. So even if you are going to stay in the animation layer till the end of the shot, it's got to still make sense within the context of the overall base layer. So right here, I'm making sure the fingers are kind of almost the same as the base layer now. So they can very, very slowly to sort of ease in to that final frame. Same with the thumb as well, but the thumb slightly delayed. So now you can see I've got the very basic animation there. It's a bit too, um, what's the word? There's no like offsets or overshoot at this point. But you can see on the left hand screen there, the graph editor works the same, um, but it's showing both layers. So the keys at the bottom of the graph, that's the base layer, and the keys at the top, that's the one I'm animating. So I can still go into the graph editor, add in my overshoots and my offsets, all the same tricks I can use from the main animation layer, I can use them also in this layer too. So adding some overshoot there to the elbow, so it doesn't sort of hit a wall, so it bounces in. Then again, yeah, so you go and fix my keys. I mean, you can spend just as much time as you want I mean, I, I'm doing this quite quickly. 
but you can spend more time with the fingers, the hands. I'm just trying to make sure that the spacing of the wrist is not too even. I want to make sure that it actually like snaps down quite fast. And I'm adding that overshoot now as well. And then as you can see here, over the like, 40 frames or so, because it's a consistent cycle, I can generally just let it slowly ease back in. And don't really have to do much more animation. Maybe had some head turns just for variety, making the head seem a bit more snappier. It's a bit floaty right now, so giving it a bit more texture or a bit more um, strength. So that's one use for the animation layer. I'm going to show you a different example in a different clip. So this is the cycle I did the other day for a dinosaur. And you can see here in this animation, there's a slight sort of head twist. Um, it's very subtle, and I did this more just to, I guess, to see what was going to happen if I added some animation character to the cycle. But this workflow is the same workflow, but we can take it a step further. Yeah, so here we are in the Maya scene. This is the basic file with no animation, and the cycle I made the other day. So this time I want to add a few more, this will, I guess, secondary action or secondary animation, like that head twist. But this time, instead of using one layer and doing everything on that layer, we can use multiple layers to add different levels of this, I guess, noise or secondary animation. So the first thing is I'm going to add this head shake twisting again. And I want to use just the neck controllers and maybe some of the head. So add those into the layer. Again, set my key at the end of these two um, cycles. And I can go in and just like I would do again, I can add some rotation in maybe the RY. So it's going to twist. And then I can just start working on the motion. The good thing about this, as I said, all this stuff I'm doing, even if it breaks completely, it's non-destructive. Nothing I'm doing here is breaking my cycle. So I can really, really play around with things and have fun with things and just see how it looks. There's no pressure to get things done perfectly. And I am using this for cycles, but like I said, this can be used for any sort of animation. Let's say your director or your mentor gives you some notes and you're not quite sure if you can implement them correctly or if they're even gonna work. You can do them in a layer and then send them to him and he can give you feedback and you can then go in and change it instantly or delete it instantly and nothing you've done has been lost. I mean, I for a long time was quite stubborn and I thought everything should be in one clean layer with one clean spline. And that is nice to see, but it's not necessary. And worst comes to worst, if you have to do that for some sort of game export, you could always bake down everything to one layer and it will keep all those details into one merged layer. But you can see here, I'm just adding this first twist and um, just playing around with it. Again, this is not like a scripted video in the sense of I haven't like planned out the animation beforehand. I thought I'd just sit down and just see what goes on, have some fun. And you can see here, I'm trying to get this really nice jiggle in the neck. It isn't really working at this stage, but I think it's it better by the end. The, with the weird thing about this rig, I guess weird, maybe it's intended, but the neck controllers have a different rotation to the head. So it's a bit annoying to work on them at the same time. Okay, so that's the kind of initial twist done. But I want to add some more information to this. Because I feel like at this stage it's a bit lackluster. So what we can do is we can do the same thing again. We can duplicate this layer. And then we can actually add another level of detail with a different type of motion. So this time I'm going to add a head sort of turn. So going to look to the side maybe. So it maintains all of that information from the layer below it, or well, actually any layer above or below, and it will then kind of merge it together to make something new. And I'm animating it this time in world space, just because I want to make sure that it doesn't break too much. The head still seems to have a mind of its own, I think because of the global parenting I've set it to, which was on purpose, but uh, in this situation, it's a bit unhelpful. I can then adjust things you know, separately, right? So everything I'm doing has its own layer and also in graph editor, its own set of curves. Um, and since I've been working with motion capture and mocap, using animation layers has been also really, really useful for that as well. 
So I really would start to look into using animation layers in your daily animation. And then also just offsetting curves again as well, like normal, for any other sort of offset chain. And um, this is also a good way to add really dirty noise. So for example, if using um, maybe a wing flap, for example, you can do a really nice clean flap on one layer. And then on the next layer, you can add this noise value that adds all the subtle like vibrations to your shot. And that can be used for kind of any type of um, situation. Another example would be if a character is lifting a really, really heavy object, on one layer, you have the really nice clean animation with the character showing the weight of the, the object. And then on a new layer, you had some really tiny vibrations onto some of the rotation controllers. And then you can kind of feel this kind of tense in the, the tension in the body and the vibrations in the body, which you can then adjust the strength of in that layer and also turn it on and off when you need it to. So basically it's a way of adding this detail or texture to the animation that you wouldn't really be able to do on one layer, not without spending so much time adjusting curves almost frame by frame. So now I'm adding one more layer, like a stretch, like a yawn, which I'm not quite sure if this works, like I said, but I'm gonna try it. And also you see there that I forgot to key at the start of the frame. There's a button, which is zero, which I'll highlight on the screen right now. And that button, if you click it, you can then set your key to the base layer's value. So basically zeroing out the layer. So you don't need to worry if you make mistakes. And there you can see also I can mute layers when I want to. I can make changes when I want to. And also, like I just said before about the weight of a layer, you can also key how much the layer is affecting the animation. So right now there's a weight of one. If I click this K button, you see I will set a key on this frame. Now it's 0 0.345. Go to a different frame. I adjust the value. Now back to one. And I can then key or blend different layers together, which is really good for, especially for game animation with like attacks and then jumps and walks and runs when you're blending things together. This is how you can get some really nice and quick and easy changes to your shots while spending basically no time having to physically animate. And also you can change the layer so it overrides the base layer, which I don't do that often, but the option is there as well, which is really useful for some people. So I hope that was useful for someone. I am really trying to grow my channel right now. I'm doing almost daily uploads, either if it's a cycle or some short little clip or bigger sort of full tutorials like this one. And from time to time, I'll do some really long one hours or time lapses as well with my work. If there's anything you guys want to see as well, do please leave a comment down below and I'll reply to all my comments, any questions you have, and I'll try to also make videos that you guys want to see. So thanks so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.